Hey, my new magicians. How are you guys today? So today, my next guest in the Money Magic series, episode five, is Tony Stewart. Welcome, Tony. Hello. It's so nice to be here. Yo, thank you, Vangile. I am so excited to interview. You have no clue. Like, Wow, we've been watching your journey for so many months. I won't say for so long because it's really not that been long, but it's, just, it's not been that long. But because of how much sharing and vulnerability happens in the student group, it always feels like we know everyone, you know, that <laughs> we've known them for years. <laughs> So it feels like that, actually, like talking to you feels like I've known you forever. But for those people who don't know you, please tell us about yourself and what you do. Okay, so I, um, my name is Tony Giselle Stewart, and I was born and raised in Cape Town, where I still live and work. Um, and I think what's interesting is that recently I've been shifting how I identify, because I think this thing of the words we put after I am are very powerful. Mm. And so mm. I used to say I am a poet, but the thing is I'm many things. So I work, mm. I, I see my work as being a listener for the stories mm. that help black and brown South Africans heal our intergenerational trauma so that mm. we can remember who we really are and, re uh, and reclaim our innate agency and power and divinity which is also present in our ancestral DNA, not just the trauma. And so the yeah. way in which I do that work is through poetry and through being an artist. Mm, I so, so love this. I love what you just said about I am, right? And the words that we put after I am. Hmm. Something to really ponder on. So tell me, what does money mean to you? If you had to describe money to an alien, what would you say it is? <laughs> so, I mean, money really is energy. It's the thing, it's the way, it's, it's the system we've developed to exchange mm. what we need from each other. Before we used to barter, but now, you know, if I give you my time in exchange, you give me money. Um, yeah. If, you know, I need, if I need a, a particular product from you in exchange, I give you money. Um, mm. And what's interesting is that I, like I, under, I feel and know that now, but before yeah. money was control to me and yeah. money, like, it, it felt, it felt, I felt trapped by the fact, by money. I felt like my dreams were determined by whether or not I could afford it. Um, yes. You know, and so now yeah. to me, Money means freedom and money means agency. Yeah. And it means yeah. power to create the kind of world that I want to live in for yes. the communities that I come from and the people that I love and believe in so that I'm not mm. always at the mercy of the kind of like systemic structures of injustice. And yeah. so for me, money is a really, really important. It's not that money gives us power. It's that when we recognize our own power, then we can manifest the money we need to make, to create the kind of world that we want to live in. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love that you just said that, right? That because sometimes we say that money gives this power, but really what it is, is that we are the ones that have the power. And we, once we can realize that we then determine how we make money how we spend money, how we save money. And what you've just said is so key about creating the world that you want using money. Because often, yeah, we're trying not to uh, make money because money is the root of all evil or the love of money is the root of all evil. So then we don't um, allow ourselves to make money. And in that way, we're not even aware that we are being controlled by money. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And it's like people, people think we have this thing that um, if we, like we don't want it too close, we don't want to be seen to mm. like it too much. Oh no, I don't like money. Yes. But the truth of the matter is not about whether you like it or not. We live in a world where if you don't have money, you don't have a roof over your head and you can't eat. Yeah. 
And so it, it, we place this value judgment on whether or not we like money, but the truth is we, mm. need, we need it in order to live in this world. That's the world that we've cre- collectively created or that we've been born into. And so yeah. there's something about changing and shifting our relationship with it so that we can transcend the limits mm. that injustice of the, that the, the limits of the injustice of the system place yes. upon us. I love this. I love how this is going, like merging social justice and money because like, and I know that in the group we go, like in the course and just in the student group, we go deep on just like the complexities of Mm. systemic injustice and how it links to money and how like when good people check out of the system, and the tool that is often being uh, demand that uh, we are being demanded to use to cre- recreate the system or to make changes in our lives individually is money. It doesn't help, right? It actually doesn't help because then we're just ignoring the truths of what it is right now that we need. Like I need, if I need food, I need money to get food. And if I check out of the system and I'm just like, I'm just not going to worry about money. That means that I need to depend on my mom, my dad, my siblings or someone else to help, which is not a problem. But in the long run, what happens when they need help and I am not able to also contribute because I have been, uh, I've somehow not been doing my work to work exactly. on my money issues as well, right? Exactly. So there, it's so layered and there is no one real solution because at the same time, we want to change the system, but at the same time, we live under the system. So, oh, so many issues and Also, we forget that stuff. we are the system, right, Fangile? Because the thing is, the system can't yes. survive without us buying into it. And that's not to bypass that's the very so true. real realities of the injustices that the system imposes upon us. Yes. But the truth of the matter is also that all systems require the buy-in of the people who live <gasps> in them. Wow. And we need to start looking at the ways in which we've internalized things, whether that's mm. around money and all of these other ways. We need to look yes. at what's internalized of the system and what we're unconsciously perpetuating and what we're not. And so... What's yeah. amazing about the Creating Money Magic course is that we're learning how we do that. Yes. So around this, money. Oh my God. Tony, I love it <laughs> because in the you always push the discussion so much further for all of us, you know? I think that they everyone in the um, student group brings different elements. And with you, it's often like pushing us to really have these discussions around systems and the way that we buy into them, for example, or just the way that we operate within them. Mm-hmm. And so before we even go any further, <laughs> I wanted to ask you, <laughs> when you heard about the Money Magic course, <laughs> what did you imagine it to be? And I love, I want to ask you particularly this question because you are an artist and i was i won't lie i was really shocked because um in literally a day after doing the master class you were just like yeah i'm in i'm down for this course <laughs> so i'm really interested in what you imagined it to be um i'm trying to think about you know it was a very short time from learning about you to having the master class to joining the course and yeah. i think I think I first realized at the beginning of 2016 when I was still living in London at the end of my master's year that my relationship was, that my kind of struggle with money was more than just the practical stuff. Because I, you know, I could budget and whatever, but Mm. somehow I still wasn't. And I realized that because I asked a friend if I could borrow money and um, 
yeah, I'd asked if I could borrow money and she was totally fine with that. And she was just like, I expect you to ask me for help. We've known each other our whole lives. This is what it's about. But I had shame in asking her. And so that's when I kind of first realized that my relationship with money was about, you know. And then in 2018, at the start, I sat down with a cousin who had built her wealth from nothing all the way to the top. And and I sat with her because I wanted practical advice for like, how is she investing? How did she save? How did she do it? Yeah. And so I took that advice and I could still feel, it's like, I could feel there's something I wasn't getting to. Yeah. Um, in my life, the beginning of last year, beginning of 2019. <clears throat> yeah. And then, um, and then in kind of like May, I was having a very difficult month and I'd done all of this work and I still didn't have enough money to get to the end of the month. And I remember speaking about it to another poet friend and they said, oh, you should go and look at Van Gilema Kwakwa's work. So then I looked you up and I saw, I can't remember, I think I like downloaded the book and, and the, the free workbook. Yes. And I kind of started it, but I couldn't even do that because it's like, I was in such a state that even the thinking about the vision was too overwhelming, you know, even trying yeah. to get into it. And then yeah. I saw a live class. And when it yes. was like the seven emotions that keep us stuck, I was like, I know this, I, like, this is what I need. And so yeah. that class i remember coming off the class and just being like i don't know how i'm gonna do this but i need to like sign up for this course at this interview. yeah yeah and a week later <laughs> i joined and so um yeah i just i f- because of my first experience of it was the live class my first experience of you was the live class i knew that what yeah. we were doing was looking at like how our emotions get in the way of our ability to work with money and save money and grow money. And I could feel that that's where I was stuck. So I knew I was in that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. I love it. So what do you think about the course now? How does it feel now that you've signed up? <laughs> no, I need to go check my notes because I'm, I'm worried that I'm going to forget stuff. <laughs> the, the way that I feel about the course is that this is thus far one of the best decisions I've ever made for myself and for my life. Yeah. And it's probably, it is, it's the most money I've ever spent on myself and invested mm. in myself. And I yeah. said this all the time, like I would spend this money three times over, you know, because yeah. now that I've got access to life. I mean, that is just mind blowing. But the yeah. thing about the course is that it's given me a framework for working with money years but it's also given yeah. me so much more. And, and it's like, it's allowed me to take, there's something about this course that feels like it's allowed me to take all of the healing and self-awareness and inner work that I've been doing in different ways, in different spaces over the last 20 years or so. And it's given me mm-hmm. like one space where can I, I can practically apply that. So I think yeah. part of the reason why I took the course so well is because for the first time, someone was talking about money from an emotional point of view that was deeply rooted in the South African context and our own history Mm. and gave us the tools to get through those blocks because I can do a budget and I can go, but I don't understand why I can't stick to it, you know? Yes. And so so this course gave me that, but yes, but this is the thing that I really want to (laughs) say is that, it's like sometimes I do the meditations for stuff that's got nothing to do with money. Like for me, the course is like, now it's like, okay, this is going on in my relationship or this is going on around that piece of work. And I go, okay, this is inner team stuff. This is inner, this is is vow invisibility. Then I go do that meditation and I just ignore all your problems around money because it's not about the money, it's about this other thing. And so it's like now I have this practical toolbox that I can apply to whatever situation I need. Yeah. It's really like, it's really amazing. And so- I I feel the same way, by the way. I'm always (laughs) like, I- okay let me just this is not about the money but in a way you then you later realize that actually it was about the money it just didn't show up in the money in the yeah. way that I thought it was gonna show up so I thought yeah. I was dealing with a relationship or a family issue but actually I was dealing with some deep money dynamics here <laughs> because everything is it's all one and the same thing right that's what we also yeah realize. and so yes. the, other thing, the other thing that like that I feel about the course now is that I realized that money is simply a mirror or like a symptom or like a litmus test or a pointer for how well I'm doing in my relationship with myself. 
oh, oh my gosh, you're going to have to unpack that. that. <laughs> because <laughs> it's so, I'm like, I mean, like, I grasp what you mean, but someone who's listening, and I'm sure most of the Money Magic students are like, of course, like, <laughs> but please unpack that because that is so deep. <laughs> so, <clears throat> okay, let me think of an example. Okay, so we went, we went into, I really love this term sheltering in place, which Angela Davis uses instead of lockdown, because Angela Davis says yes. that lockdown is a very violent term that talks about prisons. And so sheltering oh. in place is what we would do when we were sheltering in our own homes. So oh, at the start yes. of South Africans' time of sheltering in place, I remember yeah. when the announcements went off, you yeah. said you messaged me and you were like how are you doing all the artists and the freelancers are freaking out their work's being cancelled da, da, da. and i've always noticed yeah. you're just like i'm i'm fine i don't know why but i'm fine <laughs> <laughs> i feel like i'm gonna be okay you know i've got the money magic course yeah. i can work through my fears i can work through you know yeah. and so that was a By moment the way, i was i was doing that like i would just like choose a student every day to voice note that i knew their industry was being hit mm. and like i gave it up after like seven days because i was like these people are not <laughs> reacting the way that i expected them to react so i was like okay this is my drama like i need to go do my work <laughs> when i messaged you you were like okay like it's all good man and i was like <laughs> Wow, but I'm on Facebook and artists are having a meltdown. Because over they're this. not money magic students. <laughs> right? Because so the thing about that. being a money magic student is you realize you can create your own income no matter the circumstances of the world around you. Right? So I just, yeah, so after like a week of that, I had it in my thing that I'm going to be like supportive of the students and then like after seven days i was like i need to be supportive of myself <laughs> that i have created for myself you know? <laughs> <laughs> but i love that so yeah go back to your story about so that was a, place. and so that was a really good example of my relationship with myself right because yeah we were go here we were going into this time of real uncertainty people's work was being canceled left, right, and center. Um, yeah. And I felt really calm. And I felt calm yeah. because I knew that I had the tools I needed to get myself through it. And I also yeah. knew that I had this amazing community that I could go to when things, yeah. if, if I got to a point where things were going to hit, you know. And so, yeah. and so then, and then in, in terms of money, like I just, I sat down, you know, I, I looked at things practically and it was hard because... For yeah. the first time in my life, I had to phone the bank and I had to say, I can't make the payment on my credit card this month. And yes. I felt like a teenager who'd been sent to the principal's office. Listen, I'm a, I was like, must go to shoes, okay? Being sent to the yeah. principal's office is akin to death. It's like the worst thing that can happen to you. I felt like that, phoning the creditor. Oh. And I was just like, you know? And so, and so again, it's like the money is showing me is a mirror for my relationship with myself. Why was I feeling yes. that way? Because I judged myself for the fact yes. that I didn't have the money. And I had a story oh. in my head about, yeah. I should have known better, I should have saved, I should have planned. Mm. And like, yeah. if you look at that devoid of emotion and devoid of context, maybe I should have. But the thing that yeah. the bank account challenge has shown me, and this has been yeah. a big for me, is that, I actually, no one ever taught me how to work with money. Yes. Whew. Tony, that is another bombshell. I remember Listen. when you dropped it on us in the student group and we all had to just take a break and we realized that we've been shaming ourselves over something we were never taught to do. Thank you. But we somehow we all think we should know. know. Dude. And the thing is, right, it's, it's the same thing, like, you always say you have the MBA, you have the degree, it's like, yes, I can have a master's, but I have a master's in poetry and education, I don't have a master's in yeah. how to work with money, and having a yes. master's in finance or an MBA is also not a degree in, this is yeah. how you work with money, this is how you do yeah. a budget, this is how you spend, yeah. this is how much you should put aside for rent, like, no one sat me down and taught me that stuff, accounting 
metric level account exactly. is not learning how to work with money. It's learning how to do the books. It's learning how to do the books. Yeah. And so it's yeah. like, th- there's no way that, um, and having that moment was such a like, wow, I've been beating myself up for something oh that I didn't to do. What a like painful, unrealistic, heavy expectation on myself. Yeah. And so again, it's yeah. like our, our relationship to money is a mirror for how we treat ourselves and oh. how we see ourselves and how we yeah. love ourselves. Yeah. Yes. I so love that you brought that up because it's so deep, right? And I have seen how also the kids that have been taught that they are incredible. There's all this expectation that they will grow up and they will change the family's legacy because they're going to get the university degree and then they're going to make lots of money. And then when they grow up and then they don't do that and then they become adults in their 30s, 40s, 50s, there's so much shame around that that they couldn't live up to those expectations. And then they also don't go seek help. Because that is the crux of it. It's that, like, I've had people say to me, I have to join the course when I am financially stable, when I am 100% and put together. Then why do you need the course? Then why do you need the course, right? But it is coming from the space of, if I'm going to go in there, I don't want to be the one that is, I need to come perfect. You know? It's, still working from that space of even though nobody taught me I still need to be perfect when I show up I can't be amongst everyone else who is doing the work and not be the one who is the a student still so you're still operating we're still operating from this mode where again what you said at the beginning about what we say in front of I am so yeah. when I've seen that often with adults, like the kids, the teenagers, the children that grew up being A students, when you come into adulthood and there is no grading, but everybody has put this pressure that you will continue to be an A student, like an A student, even as an adult, like have your stuff together. When things don't go well together, the first thing that comes, uh, when things don't go as planned, the first thing that comes up is deep shame. Like you have done something wrong, but it's not true. It's like everyone puts all this pressure on us to know how to manage money. Just wake up and know how to deal with money, but nobody ever teaches us how to. So, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So... Uh, when you start at the beginning, Tony, you said that you felt like money was control at one point. How did you, um, how did you shift this? Uh, how, what was your process in shifting this? If you don't mind uh, sharing with us, like, mm. how did you know that it was starting to shift? How did it feel for you mm. in your body emotionally? <laughs> mm. I think, you know, I think the thing about control is a, is a more recent realization through the coursework. Um, mm-hmm. I think, you know, before this, I used to feel like I was just always afraid. Like the, the, the dominant emotion mm-hmm. around money was fear, like fear of not having it, Ooh. fear of never <laughs> yeah. having enough of it. And fear is so, fear is so trapping. I felt trapped by it. Uh. I felt like no matter how hard I worked, it was never enough for money, yeah. you know? And then I yeah. felt resentful of it because mm. I felt like I was doing the most and it still wasn't showing up for me and everyone else was doing, was like getting ahead, you know? Yeah. Um, I would struggle to talk about, I would struggle to like name my fee. I would procrastinate with sending invoices, all of these like really yeah. unconscious things, you know? Yeah. Um, and, and like through the process of the course. Yeah. Because it's like seeing what the underlying beliefs are and seeing like what are the vows that I'd had. What, and yeah. so much of it is like all of it for me personally has been about just how I saw and didn't see myself. Mm. And how I was looking at myself through this. Mm 
really judgmental and critical lens and essentially mm. just that a not good enough story you know like a, um, the mm. vow of is good enough um and just yeah. feeling like no matter what i did i never measured up um Ooh, that and, is and, deep. And, and and really feeling like this weight of like money was this thing that determined and it's because i grew up in a family where yeah. you know where money was tight and and it's it's also this oh the other thing was also the other thing i also want to add to the kind of money story is like i was really good at making it look like i had my ish together i was yeah. really good at making it look Same. like i knew what i was doing you know eight years of being a full time poet and being a freelance artist and you know project managing mm. and curating and whatever but i was living from month to month all the time you know and there was like yeah. a particular year where i had like some money come in that kind of gave me like mm. that gave me a release for a really long time but because i didn't yeah. know how to work with money i didn't know how to take that massive lump sum and invest it to make more and more money so two yeah. years later it still it also ran out the kind of cushion also ran out so yes. it and and it's and the reason that 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 the thing around money has shifted was the two bank account challenges really shifted things for me so the one in october yeah. last year and then yeah. the one this time and the one this yeah. time the thing that shifted was that i forgave myself for all the things oh. i blamed myself for around my sleep yeah and the amount of chunkere that happened and the amount of crying that happened in order for that forgiveness you know we all know you need to have tissues and toilet paper all the time but like <laughs> like literally so the first thing people know. ask me they say what do i need when i do the course or one of my journal clients and and tissues and water that's all you need <laughs> i literally said that that was my thing i was like just get you a box of tissues get you some water and then just get down to the meditations and then get your pen and paper and then just be prepared for the day <laughs> exactly exactly and so oh. that shift and do you know what else shifted things for me was one of oh. the spirit of money meditations where money came through yeah. and was so kind and so it was, it was like yeah. an elder like a grandmother figure who was just like oh. we love you and we see you and you're doing so much and you need to see that you're doing it now you know yeah so. oh my gosh just that right because i think that we don't see that we're doing enough we always think that to get more we need to do more you know or we need to be more uh more than what we are we never see ourselves as i am enough from the space to get what i want and that that inability to connect to that and to just instead of saying just affirming it but to really feel it and be within yeah. that is so completely different and so healing yeah. so i really really love that so tony what what are some shifts that you've seen in terms of i mean you've already taken us through what um income shifts have you seen from being in the course <laughs> uh, oh gosh yeah. yeah this is actually the perfect question for you right <laughs> especially let's start with the pricing <laughs> with the pricing. <laughs> <laughs> oh okay shifts okay let me see um I made a list because I also don't want to forget. Um, <laughs> wow, Tony, you are so prepared. <laughs> just because it's, you know I was prepared, ne? because my brain doesn't understand that I have one mouth. So it will shoot five <laughs> different things at me. And so I'm like trying to be, you know, help you so that we can also <laughs> communicate the message clearly to people who want to be students and not be watching forever. <laughs> um which shifts around money okay so um so i'm comfortable talking about money i'm comfortable naming my yeah. fee and asking for my fee without batting an eyelid if people can't afford yeah. it i don't take that personally that's not really my business <laughs> like, you know and it's not i love that not being mean it's just like this is my value and this is what i give and you come to me for something that no one else can give yeah. you um, amen <clears throat> you yeah. know 
Um, yeah. I have. I so love that. Hey, but do you mind sharing just a snippet of like what that process took to get there? Because I think it's awesome sure. that we always share to say, oh, I have the shift now. But <laughs> this has been a process. No, right? this is a process. So I used to have three different rates for, 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 you know, I used to have three different rates. I used to have a, a rate for individuals. <clears throat> But maybe yeah. just to talk about the things I do. You can commission yeah. me to write a poem. You can um, book me to perform and you can book me to run a workshop. And my yeah. workshop is less about teaching people how to be poets. And it's more about using poetry to do like reconciliation work or social justice work. So oh, poetry in an applied yeah. way, you know, using poetry as a medium to get people to connect, to talk about issues. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I would have four different rates a rate for individuals, a rate for NGOs, a rate for government, and a rate for corporates slash private schools. Mm. Mm. And yeah, and I'm just trying to think what the process was because I know there was stuff at the end of last year and there was, and then there was a big shift this year. So <clears throat> I think a lot of it was like letters to money, I mean, it's, this is also what happens, right? You're so in the present of the now journey that you can sometimes forget the details <laughs> of how you got to where you are now. I know. <laughs> um, but I think it was a few, th oh, okay, it was a few things. I know that vows of invisibility were a big healing, a big healing thing for me. And yes. I think the thing about pricing yes. was the fear of what people would say about yeah. you know, if I charge too much, like being rejected, people thinking that I think too much of myself, um, yeah. you know, afraid that people can't afford me. Um, and so, and having these different rates, trying to be aware of other people's budgets. But what that yes. means is that I often needed to like take on a lot more work to make money. And I'm, and yeah. I was like always selling my time. Um, yes. And so then I remember in November last year, at the end of November, I remember someone had booked me for a performance and it was a, like a private school. And um, and for the first time I was like, okay, no, I'm going to charge this much for a performance. And it was the most I'd ever done. Um, yeah. and then, and then during sheltering in place after the last bank account challenge, yes. um, I've been doing a lot of shifting around my work and the kinds of work I want to be doing and getting it into mm. alignment with myself and with what ease is. And for me, the thing that makes me happiest is, um, is writing like I want to be paid premium dollar just to write poems more so than yes. performing more so than running workshops wow. because it's the thing I love doing most yeah what's interesting about poetry is that a lot of is that we have this mindset that we need to teach and run workshops in order to make the money so we can write and I yes. had a belief, like I wanted to be a poet since I was 17 years old in the trick and I remember being in the trick going I don't know how to be a poet and make money and yeah. I saw, and I would, even though like in my early twenties, I came into the scene or, you know, and, and got to see people, I could still, all I saw were people doing the most to yeah. make a living out of it. Not, there was no ease, yes. you know, and this thing of the hustle and the hustle, yeah. but, I, but like between the course and the income challenge and like all of these things of like, what is it that you really want to do? Like what brings yeah. you joy? What brings you ease? What is, you know, what's the thing that yeah. brings you alive? I had to yes. be honest about the fact that the thing that brings me most alive is writing and being paid to write, like, you know? Yeah. And, and so doing the work around shifting the fear that yeah. if I chose to do that, I wouldn't be hired or it's not what people want. Yeah. And so after yeah. the last bank account challenge, two people had asked me to quote them for, for to run workshops. Yes. And, um, <clears throat> and I was going to like, looking at my individual. So one was for an individual to do like a series of five poetry workshops, like a mini course with them one-on-one. -on -one. And yes. I was going to charge them the individual hourly rate. And yes. I was talking to a friend and she just said, you're going to charge them what? For five one-on-one -on -one <laughs> sessions. She's like, do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? She's like, do you understand that I walk into this? She's like, I walk into this book festival and I feel like I have a right to be there because you, my friend, started the poetry section of it. And so I know that I am legitimate there. Wow. Wow. And she's like, you need to charge this person your top rate. Yes. Even though it's an individual. 
Yes. Just, they're getting you one on one and you're going to do bespoke work with them. So then I, yeah. and, then, and then the next person who was asking for a quote was also an NGO. And so then I looked at both of these quotes and I just put the top rate in, I put in my premium rate, my hourly rate for both. Yeah. And I just yeah. felt everything in me like come into alignment and feel lighter. And I was like, that's it, I'm done. Yeah. There's no more different rates, I have a single rate. Yeah. And, then, and then, like two or three weeks later, this international organization that I can't name because I'm still under embargo contacted me and commissioned me to write a poem about a subject that I absolutely want to write about. I don't know how they found me. Yeah. And, guess what they, and guess what happened? They were like, this is the fee. What's the fee? My new rate for commission poems. I hadn't even told anybody yet. So wow. I love it. So that, I love it. You know? And so like, so that's one of the shifts. And I think the other shift is like now, um, <clears throat> I have, I have like, I've, okay, this is a big shift. I used to have a yeah. personal account with all of my things in the personal account. And I have a business account. I have a different yes. I have a budget for work and personal only one place. I have a monthly work budget, a monthly personal budget. I have oh, income projections yeah, wow. for the next five years. And I have clear spending Hi. for the business and for myself, two separate things. And I have line oh. items for things like, you know, property this holiday you know if, if i decide to get married, like all these things that i want to happen in my life even if the evidence of them isn't there it's like i'm financially budgeting for them in my personal life and in the business wow I totally. really big dreams about oh also i no longer see myself as, only as an artist i see myself as a business and i understand oh. that i need to I can't keep selling my time, Vangile, if I want to like be a mom yes. one day, if I want to actually, you know, take time off if I have children. And so I need to find yeah. income streams that are not dependent on me sitting at my desk writing poems. And so that's the kind of the yeah. next thing that I'm getting to. But so the business has, yeah. um, I'm really excited about this. The business has income projections for the next five years and not projections, yeah. income like goals. And yes. um but it's also got line items. One, one of the sections on my business budget is expansion. And so it's like, wow. okay, going to in, like making money to invest in the business to grow things. Oh, wow. So kind, of big, kind of continent wide project that I have around poetry, which I'm, which I want to start and then get other people to invest in. But yeah. looking at how I could invest, like if I make the money I want to, then I could invest 10,000 rand a month in the project itself. 10,000. Mm. You know? And if I do that, then it's easier to Wow. So I could never do that before without freaking out and then getting like yeah. overwhelmed. And you know what? The amazing thing is, I know that I don't have to know how to do that now. It's like, I can have it there and I'm only yeah. focused on this next step. And then the steps will come as they come. So Yes, right? I think that what you've just said is so powerful, Tony, because... That's the thing. We set these beautiful goals, but then they overwhelm us, right? Because there's so much trauma and we're triggered. Yeah. Actually, the income goals are the trigger. And then we Listen. start self-sabotaging and all sorts of things. And then we are affirming and visualizing and manifesting but one month, the next month. That affirming is not month. going to heal the trauma. You have to sit exactly. and bathe the wound to heal the trauma. And when we're affirming, we are also not learning the practical steps to do exactly what you just talked about. Like, I mean, you literally got in the group and was like, who are you guys banking with for business purposes? And then you went and created a whole spreadsheet for all of us to see what the banking charges were. And you were sharing all the different um, uh, pros and cons. I was just like, what is happening here? You know, honestly, the student group has a life of its own. Listen, I know no, we need to, okay, the thing is, we need to talk about the student group. We need to, at, before this interview, we need to talk about how the student group is like what makes, is like an actual feature of the Money Magic course that yeah. you just can't sell, you know, like, <laughs> so we need to please. I can't to explain it, right? Because most people would think that I'm the one that comes in and teaches most of the things. And I'm just like, whoa, no, I was guys, like, I'm there. I was like, work. no, <laughs> it was amazing. But that's the kind of stuff that I think when we are in deep trauma, we don't 
we don't even think like what are bank charges how do what are the kind of perks of banking with each bank and of course everyone already knows in the student group when they ask about <laughs> business banking i have my own bank that i've got issues with and i just keep going like that <laughs> <laughs> it's, so a, I really it's a feature add, it's a feature i add nothing to the business banking conversations guys like i just get triggered and like write whole essays on my trigger but this is why i love the student group because everyone else just goes oh okay van is triggered again like everyone else gives like really staunch and great <laughs> advice whereas i mouth down <laughs> but I love it. Okay, so oh, hold on. I need to tell you another thing. And another thing that shifted for me. I went from having one bank with all of my accounts there, and now what mm. I do is I have a one bank where my business account is. I've separated things out, and then I've got my personal yeah. bank, and then I have a completely different bank where all my savings goes. And I went from not being able to save to now saving more than my 10% every within this, just, just during this, like the last month, the last six weeks after the bank yeah. account challenge from the end of the bank. account yes. challenge. Now. Oh. And it's easy to save. And, and before I would have felt overwhelmed with having three different spaces, but it's actually mm. nice to have different spaces. Also the saving um, bank I went to because someone yeah. was talking about how this bank has amazing. <laughs> Yeah, and they do because my personal bank and your business bank are the same, and they are whack at like giving us. They are so interest. whack. <laughs> they are so whack. You know, but I love what you've just said, right? About the practical elements of money, because for us to move, for us to really build generational wealth and be really honest, we need not just the beautiful emotional healing work and the spiritual work we also need the practical stuff we need mm -hmm. the goal setting and we need to talk about look at our services because that's one of the key things that we do which i know often triggers everyone when i'm like let's go back to our services mm -hmm. pricing how much time is it going to take you to get any of this done are you selling time for dollars or rands let's get down to it and it is often a triggering experience because a lot of people have had to come back and say this is not working for me i am overwhelmed i am tired and i don't see how i can continue on this path and then it means you don't quit your career path right you didn't you just said i'm gonna create new a whole new business model because i am a business you know and i can do this so i love that tony thanks for sharing um actually how has your how have you seen your relationships change around money when you have to discuss money with people in your life friendships around money or anything you spoke a lot about like feeling um ashamed when you uh had to borrow money from a friend how have you seen yourself show up in relationships around money? Um, <clears throat> it's definitely, I'm not afraid to talk about money anymore and I don't feel uncomfortable. I'm also one of those people that I'm just like, there's so much silence and shame in our communities about so many things. And yeah. the silence like those things are actually like money is not actually the thing. It's, it's our, it's our stories and our beliefs around money. Yeah. So I have no issue talking about what I charge for things. Yeah. And, and that's not from a place of, I think there's something really important about talking about what we charge so that yeah. people have an understanding. And that we also give other people permission to like, dream bigger for themselves yeah. and to want more for ourselves. Because also, Mangela, as black and brown yeah. people, we don't even understand how deeply like the psychology of apartheid has impacted us to the fact you that know? we unconsciously wow. limit what we think we should and shouldn't earn. That money is mm. not the issue. White supremacist racist or white psychosis racist capitalism is the issue, not yeah. money. And there's yes. two different things. And so yes. and the trauma that that system has impacted on our, on our like, ancestors and our parents and our grandparents yeah. is the issue, not, the, not money itself. So yeah. I'm comfortable yeah. talking about money. I'm, I'm not ashamed of the fact that I have debt. 
you know, I have a debt yeah. repayment plan and I'm working through that. Um, yeah. I just, I just don't feel tongue tied by it and I don't feel trapped by it. And I also don't yeah. feel overly um, attached to it as in, because yeah. I think there's an unhealthy both ways. It's like my value yeah. is not, I'm not now valuable because now I'm earning what I want to be earning or I'm on my Amen. way. To be I'm valuable because I'm valuable. Yeah. And that time of sheltering in place and doing the work really rooted me in that space because I yeah. wasn't earning for two months and somehow yes. I was to pay for certain things and I got debt relief from the bank for the debt, you know, and, yeah. um, and because I'm doing the work, I know that it's going to be easier for me to make that money to pay that debt off. And, yes. um, <clears throat> and so I'm a lot calmer about money. Um, yeah. And yeah it just it just feels and and also like i think the other thing is that when friends come to me with money stuff then i don't it's like i can support them and help them in a different way yes you know? so i get them to go so like my one friend i'm always challenging her like so but why are you only charging that but, da -da -da, yes. but why are you basing your fee based on what everyone else in your industry is doing? It's not about what everyone else in your industry is doing. What are you doing? How do you mm. see yourself? No, this is not mm. about the money. This is about something else, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, wow. I love this. Oh, I love what you've just said. So, Tony, we've been talking about vows of invisibility, like writing letters to money, the spirit of money. What are the key three lessons when you reflect on it that um have really um shifted you when it comes to the course releasing vows in the akashic records oh yeah akashic records akashic records akashic records i feel like i'm the only one who does them with you because no no one else talks about them i'm just like no oh, the most the most the most oh the <laughs> interview which comes out this week as episode yeah. four Akashic Records, Akashic Records, like she's also all about it, right? Um, yeah, to be fair though, every time we do do releasing vows in Akashic Records, it's like a week of just like cheers. Go is she, go is she. Yeah. Go is she. So it's like one meditation leads people to like Listen. five days of tears and crying and, and, and. <laughs> also, and also the thing for me is um, I'm not the student who can do like I keep wanting to be the student who can like do it every day religiously I do it once and it like kicks my butt and then I have to take a break and regroup and take a break and regroup and then be like okay now we're strong enough we can go back again yo but the <laughs> fantastic records changed my life because it's not only yeah. money, it showed me how yeah. and why I've been stuck yeah. in my work and why and how yeah. I've been struggling to say the things I want to say in my work and to show yeah. up and be visible and why I've been hiding in plain sight, um, yeah. why yeah. I've been afraid, like really real stuff of yeah. like, you know, past yeah. life things that are still impacting me today yeah. and that now all make sense. And the thing is, yeah. when, um, you know, it's, it, it's that release that comes with, when you just go, oh, there's nothing wrong with me. It's just this thing that's playing out. Yeah. 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 Mm, I love what you've just said. Yeah, I know. I definitely feel that. Like, I think like being able to go into our own Akashic records with a meditation and call on our own guides to help us and to be able to speak to those versions of us be it in this lifetime in other galaxies who are holding on to this uh, to the beliefs that are affecting us in this present moment so cathartic i mean so traumatic no doubt about that <laughs> but also so cathartic after Barely. you cried it out like it's the one thing that i realized i'm like it is so traumatic to do that. <laughs> I don't want to say traumatic, but it is painful. Mm. That is the better word, right? Because yeah. we are healing trauma. There's 
pain in that, but there's also so much self-compassion because some things you realize that you've been trying to heal something in this lifetime that can't be healed in this lifetime. Like you are affirming, visualizing, trying to heal something that you thought was an issue from this lifetime, but it's like something that was an issue five centuries back for your soul, you know, and that you need to go back centuries back to literally heal and integrate it in this lifetime. So super, super powerful. So that's one. And, and then the next one is inner child <laughs> meditation. Yeah. Awesome. Child, like really, and just though, and then spirit of money meditations. And I, really, and I think the thing about spirit of money meditations that's really interesting for me is that if I think about when I first did them and I joined the course and when I do them now, they're the one that shows like the complete shift because I remember my first spirit of money meditation, mm. like wow. money was so, it, it was like, yeah, the spirit of money showed up as this like disgruntled partner that was just like, so upset with me, you know, and, mm. and just so hurt by me. And then mm. in the more, in like the most recent ones, like this grandmother figure that's so loving and so holding and that, that like vast mm. shift is really, yeah. So those are my yeah. three. Oh my God. I love what you've said about spirit of money. My first ever spirit of money meditation and mind you. So I'm like listening to guidance to do the spirit of money meditation. A black and white clown shows up as my spirit of money. And now I am terrified of clowns. I don't like them. It's not my thing. And I'm just like, this is hellish. <laughs> and that was the thing for about three months of the meditation. But here's why I stuck it out. Because I was like, something is happening. So in those three months, insane shifts, like money is coming in from various places that I could not have envisioned or known. So I'm like, well, I know the only thing I'm doing is this scary and terrifying thing that I hate to do often. You know, I really hated the spirit of money meditation, but then I couldn't deny the shifts, you know, mm -hmm. like I, I just, oh, so, and I sometimes feel like that's what happens in the course is that you're like, oh my God, do I have to do this? And then you're like, but there's no denying. You, there's no denying what's happening here. Like, I'm just gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna work with it. Like, I'm gonna build a bridge. And then I didn't know, right? Because I was so new to this work and it's not like I could literally ask anyone else what is this no. of <laughs> <laughs> And then months later, so I just kind of resigned to this is my spirit of money. And then months later, the spirit of money started to change. And then like a year later, my spirit of money started showing up as this hot yoga guy. And I was just like, okay, I'm starting to love these meditations. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? But then it, oh, then it started to change even more. And then it started becoming about various goddesses. Like I started accessing different things and different planes where different goddesses would come and talk and share and show me things and sometimes it became family members then I was like oh this thing changes when my money changes it took me a while to figure it out right but because I went through the phases it's easy for me to tell the students when they freak out that oh the spirit of money is something I cannot stand and I hate it I'm like stick it out and I can't it's like it. I, it's worth it I can't because everyone wants to make it into something less scary if it does show up at first as scary and i'm like trust me three months of the thing i am so scared of today is not is not fun for me <laughs> so yeah but um so most people feel like they can just do the course on their own tony and this is the time when we can talk about the student group right <laughs> what would you say to people like that people who are like oh we can just do the free work we'll listen to vangile's videos we'll read her blog posts and we'll kind of figure it out on our own we don't have to do it in <laughs> we don't need the course and we don't need a group <laughs> it just doesn't work that way so i feel like 
the books and you know your youtube channel and the blogs and your facebook posts are valuable insights and a valuable space of learning and a valuable space of different perspectives and new ways of seeing but it's not the work it's a it's really not the work yeah. so let me say this um, the week before I joined the course, it was the end of May last year and I was going through the most. I was freaking out about money. I was waiting for payments to mm. come in so that I could make month end bills. And I remember having, it was a Wednesday afternoon and I was, and it was the Wednesday afternoon after the, the live class. And I was on the mm. large, the kind of larger Facebook group and I'd seen that Ask the Universe Tuesday post. And it was like, yes. Ask the Universe to co-create with you, but you also have to commit to what you're going to do. And I just sat with that question mm -hmm. for myself, breeze yeah. through it, got a clear intention, um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> decided what I was going to work on. And by the end of that day, a payment had come through. And so, yeah. and, that, and, then I, and then I was like, okay, wow, this really worked for me. Um, mm. But even though that worked, that's completely different to doing the meditations and doing the yeah. journey. And the thing is, yeah. the support that you need to do this work is what makes the work possible. Like you yeah. don't, you cannot do this work on your own. Like there are even, I know that there are people who join and they maybe not, they might not be as like vocal in the group, but they have some yeah. kind of support, whether that's asking you questions privately yeah. on Facebook or they find yeah. one of us and you know, we do it like that. And so yeah. it's not only that, there's two things. It's like the depth of the work that is in the course comes mm -hmm. from like your experience of having lived through everything. And so yeah. like, and the course is always being added to because things are, yes. we're always learning new things. Um, and so you yeah. don't get the meditations, like the meditations are the thing that bring about the healing. And so yes. you're not doing the work if you're only reading the blogs and because you don't have the meditations, like the meditations are the healing. Yeah. That's the first. And then yeah. the second thing is the student group is really what makes it possible because this work is hard. And also it when is you're hard. doing the work on your own for the first time, you don't know what's going on and you feel like maybe you're going crazy, but other people have been yeah. through it and they know how to hold you through it. And the thing, the, yes. thing I'll say, the thing I'll also say is this. I have never in my life been, a, been in a community of black and brown women that is so deeply loving and healing and nurturing. And there's no ego and there's no drama. No. And there's no, it's yeah. so healing. It's so beautiful. And it's so loving. Yeah. And in yeah. one day, in one hour, we can go from celebrating someone on a post to, to holding someone going through the most at the exact same time. Yes. And, yes. And, and, most, and I haven't met anyone in person yet. Everything happens online. Yes. Uh, and so that's the other thing. Yes. And, and the other thing also that I always say to people that the power of the group and the power of the course is that Vangela is doing the work with us. So she's vulnerable with us every single day so there's no weird high like we know that she that she's holding space for us and we trust that we can let go but there's no weird yeah. hierarchy of guruness where we're all trying to become like her we're all trying to become like yeah. ourselves and we're yeah. constantly learning and she's always like the first thing she'll tell you is if i say do this but your intuition says do that go do that like always listen to your intuition and you only yeah. learn that by seeing it modeled and 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 um over and over and over yeah. again, you know, like change is a behavior. It's a way, it's a practice. It's a daily practice. And so yeah. it's the course, you know, it's completely different. Yeah. And also like the student groups are amazing. Like people teach you things all the time. Guys, we do woo work. Like in the, we do woo work in the Money Magic course. I keep bragging to my friends. I'm like, we do woo work. You, we learn how to use your womb to create the life you want. We are reclaiming and yeah. and knowledges in all ways. Yeah, of human, you know. Yeah, and I feel the amazing. exact same way. Hey, Tony. Like I always, I think the best thing about not being a guru or not being like a typical like I am a teacher with the knowledge is that I get to be vulnerable on there and I get to be like I am falling apart. And I am crying right now and I get to be triggered by 
business banking post and everyone gets to laugh at that because it's my thing and that I refuse because at the same time I'm like I know I should move from my business bank but I refuse so I'm still gonna sit with this a while so it's like everybody's just like okay this is your drama but I love that because what it means is that we all get to be vulnerable we are not trying to feign perfection but at the same time, we can celebrate our each other's victories. That's the thing that I love most about the group is that I know every day someone will be celebrating, but nobody ever feels like they cannot be angry or sad yeah. right after a celebratory post. Like someone will yeah. post a celebration, five minutes later, someone else will post, this is what I'm feeling. I'm angry. I'm sad. I'm feeling a lot of like not trusting this, this, this. And it's okay. There's no need to be quote unquote high vibe or to have it figured out. Yeah, exactly. So I love that. Actually, yeah. that's my favorite thing about the group. So my final question, um, oh, actually my second last question to you is um, how do you, do you have a routine that you use to get the inner work done to fit it in? I know you constantly it seems like it's part of your everyday life that you just kind of make it work but yeah. how do you find time to do it so i think the first thing i'll say is that i don't i don't have dependence and i don't have a family so i have my time is a lot more my mm. own than a lot of other people um but the way that i make it work is i either schedule I either make it part of my morning routine or if I'm doing something like the income challenge, I'll make it part of the end of my work day. So I'll schedule it as, because for me, the income challenge is directly related to business and work. Um, yes. Yes. And I, and so I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll schedule in an hour or two hours at the end of the day. Um, mm -hmm. That helps. Uh, accountability partners are amazing. Um, and, and this is the thing there's like, there's like, there's the student group on Facebook and then there's all this like offline stuff that happens. We have a oh my writers gosh. group, you know, we all have like friends, we connect with them. We like hold each other, we know, like, let's do the challenge together. Yeah. Do we check in with each other, all these accountability partners. So that, helps. Yeah. and then the other big yeah. thing for me is that I go at my own pace and yes. it was hard because in the, in, in the most recent income yeah. challenge, I really wanted to stay with the group and do all the live classes. Yeah. But I had one breathwork meditation bring up some big stuff. And I just had to be like, no more breathwork meditations for me. And the part that wants to like stay along, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so the way so I have a uh, that happened to me on day four, right? So we day four was of the income challenge was literally a month ago, guys. So this is like a 16 day income <laughs> challenge. Day four was a month ago. We are only now on day seven because for that month, I was like, I triggered myself in day mm -hmm. four. After that, mm -hmm. I was like, we need a time out. Yes. But I'm like, I, I am feeling it. I can't deal with this. Whatever came up needed processing. <laughs> and that's the thing. So, yeah. that you have to give part of like self-compassion is giving things space. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so... Like I really wish I could say I do it every day, but I have periods of like yeah. doing it every day. And then I have periods of lots of rest. But the thing that I mm. notice is that even when I'm not like sitting down and doing a meditation every day or journaling or journaling exercise every day, I, I'm starting to slowly and very naturally integrate those practices into the way I do my day, yeah. whether that's stuff yeah. that comes up in friendships or stuff that comes up around work. You know, so I had a work opportunity come up last week and it sent me into like overwhelmed wow. with fear of expansion. And I just journaled. Mm. I was like, okay, what am I feeling? Why am I feeling that way? Then I was like, what do I want this to do? What's my intention with this? And so I worked through it and I was yeah. like, okay. And I could feel myself like talking myself through the process like you would ask yeah. <laughs> yeah. or like how the journal prompt. My favorite thing is like, who would yeah. you think about this belief? What would it feel like in your body? You know? And yeah. you <laughs> Yeah. So yeah. yeah, wow. I also love it. I also love the journal prompts. Um, the journal prompts are just really, really awesome. Also because sometimes it's just lovely to just take a break from the meditations or from income goal setting and looking at our bank accounts and just like 
do something simple, like let's just journal for a week and talk through this. And it's just so, it's very therapeutic. Um, mm. So final question, Tony, what do you wish you had known before starting your money journey? Oh, I like this question. Um, <laughs> I wish I had known. I'm just writing my notes because... <laughs> I wish I had known that it was that it that it's okay to make mistakes, um, mm. and that not knowing how yeah. to work with money is not a reflection of my value as a person, yes. and is not an indication of whether or not I'm good enough. It just yes. means that there's an aspect of my life where I need to learn and do research and ask for some help to figure it out. Oh, yeah. I love this. I love this so much. And how do people get hold of you? I know people are like, oh my gosh, she does <laughs> racial justice work and she does it in corporate and she does workshops in South Africa. So needs that. I know the US also needs that. So <laughs> no, but now you're right. making my life difficult because I don't want to do that stuff anymore. They must pay me to write books. <laughs> yes. Okay. So how do people get hold of you to See your poems, and you also have. Um, I am one of your on your membership for on oh, my process. Patreon page. Yeah. Yes, on Patreon. Yeah. So we get poems, and we are able to read poems every month mm -hmm. that you post out. So how do people get hold, get hold of, of you me. and become part of Patreon? Okay. So I think the two things I'll say. The one thing is that. I am really interested in using the skill that I have of capturing the essence of who someone is and what they do in a poem mm. for black and brown businesses and organizations. Yes. There's something about, I'm really good at capturing your story and helping you figure out what that is and communicating it to the people that you want, people who align with your values to kind of grow your audience, you know? Mm. And so you can commission me for poems to do that, you know, like you can yes. commission me for that. And so, and then I also have a Patreon page and it's just patreon.com forward slash Tony Stewart. If you subscribe once yes. a month, you get updates, you get like early announcements. You also get poems once a month. And depending on like what level you pledge at or kind of subscribe at, you get more features. Yeah. Um, and like at one of the top ones after a year of being a subscriber, you get a poem that will see you on your birthday um Aww. and so yeah <laughs> i love that so and then, sweet and um the way to get hold of me is just my email address so mail m-a-i-l at tony stewart.com yeah okay mail at tony stewart.com i need to write that down so i can send it out to the mailing list okay this is awesome tony thank you so much for thank your time you. for your Oh my gosh, incredible insights. You know, like I'm literally having these conversations at this point for myself. At first I thought it was to let everybody in, but I'll just be honest. It's just, wow, the deep insights. I spend days reflecting on um, the conversations after talking to the students because, wow, I can't, I can't keep share. Like I can't even express to people how mind blowing it is to be in a tribe with such incredible women, such inspiring women and men, right? I mean, we've got Kanya in there who yes, is constantly so, commenting yes, doing and work. doing the work and fully representing the men in the group, right? Yes. And sharing. And it's just beautiful when he's like, and I cried when we did oh, the breath work. It's yes. just like, wow, thank you for showing up and sharing yeah. with us so it's just being in this space and i i guess right now it's just like highlighting the different kinds of um mindset and just the knowledge and energy that people bring mm. and to be surrounded by this all the time is mm. such a privilege you know it's like mm. i'm always like wow people literally think so differently but the the thinking process that goes behind the mm. comments the things that people say they advise it's 
mm -hmm. mind blowing. And I think that's what shifts us all because it's like, whoa, you know? So thank you for sharing and taking time out to share with us. And guys, if, you, if this resonated with you and you want to be part of the Money Magic course, I'd love to have you in the course. It is literally a life changing course. It is phenomenal. So you can join at wealthy-money.com forward slash money magic. Again, you can join at wealthy-money.com forward slash money magic. If uh, you're watching this and we are closed for registration, don't worry, we will open again. So just put your name in the, on the uh, form for the waiting list. And as soon as we're ready to open up, I will let you know. I'll send you updates and messages and you can enroll when, um, <laughs> when the course opens for registration. Otherwise, just shoot me a message. Ask me any questions you've got. Shoot me an email if you've got, if you're, in the, um, if you're on the mailing list, just click reply. Or I'll say, uh, find me on Facebook under Vangile Makwakwa and inbox me. Thank you very much, Tony, once more. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, guys.